Hey everybody, Eagle Run 23 here. You know, we don't really have time to work on this, but there is just something so appealing about redemption. And to be able to give a redemption story to this bear claw barrel that gave us so much problems, um, I'm interested and I'm glad that you guys were interested too because um, this is a project, you know, most of our projects, we just keep beating on them until we figure out what's wrong and make them work. This was one that I couldn't ever figure out. It never worked and it was just completely scrapped. Now, parts of that build live on like the video from the other day where I talked about the, the gun that had the multi-cam. Uh, that was the upper and lower and handguard that were a part of this build. And man, I just, I, I'm, I love that you guys were into giving this a second chance. So let me go over the parts that we have here and uh, let me see how far I can go to get this put together. Um, I'm pretty sure I have everything I need. So uh, let's take a look. First things first, Bear Creek Armory, Bear Claw Barrel. This is a 20 inch barrel. Uh, you can see compared to a 15 inch hand guard, oh, you can't see, yeah, there we go. So compared to a 15 inch hand guard, you got a little bit of poke there. The idea here was budget accuracy and we just never were able to do that. Um, it's got the fluting, it's a 223 wild, one and eight twist. This should be able to perform for us. So there's our barrel. Next, the next most important part is a bolt carrier group. This is a nickel boron and it's unbranded. This is one of those deals on Palmetto State Armory where they have those unbranded, um, I don't think it was blemished or anything. I think it was just an unbranded. So it's technically a PSA, uh, but it's nickel boron. Everything seems to check out on it. It feels feels nice. I feel like this will give us a good chance. And most importantly, it's a different BCG than what we had originally. So if we're able to eliminate a variable there, cool. Forged upper, polymer 80 lower. We milled this guy out and we, oh, out and we currently have a Davidson Defense single stage trigger. Uh, go back a couple videos ago. I've got a full review on this trigger, although we haven't shot it yet, but we did the pull weights on it and all that good stuff. I'm impressed with this trigger. I can't wait to see how it shoots. The only thing that I did not have was a handguard. And I saw this handguard, I think it's from Lakota Tactical. I don't remember. This thing is super duper light. You can tell by all the material that's been removed. We've got material in the rib here removed. There's only Picatinny here and here and it's all drilled and slotted and completely lightened. This thing weighs nothing. I like the look of it, which is why I chose it. Also, it was like $89, so I didn't wanna really spend much money on this project. We pretty much had everything else we needed. And so, happy to have that handguard. I think it will look great. I think it will look great in there and kind of show off that fluting. So we've got a bone stock lower parts kit with no trigger group, since we already have a trigger. Next is going to come as a bit of a surprise. So I don't remember when I got this. I've had this for a while and I did not know what I was going to do with it. I was actually going to talk to you guys to see if this is what we want to put on the 6.5 Grendel. And we still could, just because it's going on this gun for now doesn't mean it has to stay there. But the 6.5 Grendel is doing a od green fde color scheme and so i don't know how the black would look on there but we can take a look at it and see when when that time comes but this is a luth ar and it is the full blown what do they call it the mba1 where it's got adjustable butt pad adjustable cheek pad fully customizable it's also a rifle length which i have never messed with a rifle length buffer tube before i believe they call it an a2 buffer uh, it comes with a extended buffer weight to make up for that distance. And this is uh, non-collapsible, essentially, is the difference. Carbine versus A2 rifle length. Um, but yeah, we're going to try this guy out. 
in the packaging here, they have this little card. Look how stinking cool that MCA 22 Rimfire chassis is. That is designed for a 1022. I have a 1022 that doesn't have a stock and we are going to look this up. Does that not look super cool? It says it's $189. All right. Good job, Loof AR. Loofer. Okay, I'm gonna get to work on this. Um, maybe just a short video going over the components. Uh, the next time you see this gun in a thumbnail, it should be a complete and working firearm, which is gonna be kind of cool. We're gonna have quite a bit of chances to go to the range over the next couple of weeks, so maybe we have a chance to get this guy out there and uh, see if it can redeem itself um, with a new configuration. Oh, one other thing. I also have the original scope that we had on this gun. I have it, it's been in a box the whole time. The only thing is I could not find a mount for it. And so I did order this mount and it doesn't have a brand name on it. I believe it's Monstrum Tactical, if that is right. But this is just a little semi quick disconnect mount and it is the correct, I don't remember if that one is a one inch or a 30, whatever it is, it's the correct one for our Bushnell uh, budget optic that we're gonna run on there. Um, but I believe it's the exact same optic unless something weird happened. I believe it's the same optic that I had on the gun originally. All right, super excited about this. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. All right, well, it's the next day, and I decided to throw this on to the end of the video. Had a little bit of trouble with that back pen. This is one of the early polymer 80s that I worked on, and it's possible I just didn't have the right alignment. Um, this was also not done on the easy jig. It was done with the jig that comes with it. So I feel like I may swap it out, but it's together. We're gonna run it. I really like this Sleuth AR uh, rifle length buttstock, kind of cool. And I think this is the same Bushnell four and a half to 18. If it's not the same one, I don't know where the other one is. So we're gonna run this one. I know it was a Bushnell. I don't hate that handguard at all. And it kind of shows the uh, fluting there. It's very lightweight and you can, I mean, obviously it's not protecting much, but I kind of like it. I think it's a good look.